The previous video covered straight line, so this video will discuss the other two methods, declining balance and units of activity, which is also referred to as units of production. Now, let's use this information to illustrate the declining balance method. This method is called an accelerated depreciation method because it results in more depreciation in the earlier years of an asset's life and less depreciation in the later years. The declining balance approach can be applied at different rates. The main method is the double declining balance, which uses a rate that is double or twice the straight line rate. The rate is applied to the book value, so the formula for the double declining depreciation is the book value at the beginning of the year times the rate. The straight line rate was 20%, so this rate is double or 40%. You could also take the useful life and divide in two to arrive at the 40%. Book value is the cost minus accumulated depreciation. Note that salvage value is not included in the formula. It is ignored until the last year. Book value for the first year is the cost of the asset. But in subsequent years, book value is the difference between cost and accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year. The depreciation rate is 40% which is double the straight line rate of 20%, or we can simply divide the useful life into two. The depreciation expense is $5,200, and that is found by multiplying the book value of $13,000 by the rate of 40%. Accumulated depreciation increases, and the book value decreases by this amount. The journal entry in year one results in a debit to depreciation expense for $5,200 and a credit to accumulated depreciation for the same amount. Book value for the second year is $7,800. This is the difference between the cost of $13,000 and the accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year, or $5,200. The depreciation rate is 40%, so the depreciation expense in year two is $3,120. This is found by multiplying the book value of $7,800 by the rate of 40%. Accumulated depreciation will increase by $3,120 and the book value will decrease by the same amount. This method calculates depreciation based on a declining book value. Annual depreciation expense is computed by multiplying the book value at the beginning of the year by the depreciation rate. The depreciation rate remains constant from year to year, but the book value to which the rate is applied declines each year. This method ignores salvage value when determining the annual depreciation expense but salvage value limits the total depreciation that can be taken. Depreciation stops when the asset's book value equals its expected salvage value. In the last year of the asset's life, it is sometimes necessary to adjust the amount of depreciation expense so that the book value equals the expected salvage value. For example, note the adjustment of $685 in the last year. Just like with straight line, when an asset is purchased during the year, it is necessary to prorate the depreciation in the first year. If this company purchased the asset on April 1st, depreciation expense in the first year would be $3,900. And that is calculated by taking the annual expense of $5,200 and multiplying that by 9 twelfths. The book value for calculating depreciation in the next year becomes $9,100. And that number is found by taking the cost of $13,000 and subtracting accumulated depreciation of $3,900. The depreciation expense is $3,640 in the second year. 
and that is found by taking the book value of $9,100 and multiplying that by 40%. In the last year, depreciation expense is $180 because that is the amount needed to arrive at total depreciation of $12,000. Let's use the same information to illustrate units of activity method. Useful life can be expressed in ways other than a time period. Under the units of activity method, the life of an asset is expressed in terms of the total units of production or the use expected from the asset, such as miles driven or machine hours. The formula for the units of activity depreciation is the cost minus the salvage value divided by the estimated life in units multiplied by the actual units of activity. Calculating depreciation under the units of activity method is similar to straight line. The only difference is that the life is expressed in terms of an activity rather than years. Under this method, a company estimates the total units of activity for the entire useful life and divides that amount into the depreciable cost to determine the depreciation cost per unit. It then multiplies the depreciation cost per unit by the units of activity during the year to find the annual depreciation expense for that year. In this example, the depreciable cost is $12,000, and that is found by taking the cost of $13,000 and subtracting the salvage value of $1,000. The estimated useful life of this asset is 100,000 miles, so the depreciation cost per unit is $0.12. Cents. If this company drives the truck 15,000 miles in the first year, depreciation expense will be $1,800, and that is found by taking the depreciation cost per unit of 12 cents and multiplying that by 15,000 miles. Using this method, the amount of depreciation reflects the activity that took place during that period. If you look at the first two years, the delivery truck was driven twice as many miles in the second year as it was in the first year and depreciation expense is twice as much in the second year than it was in the first year. The journal entry to record depreciation expense in the first year is a debit to depreciation expense for $1,800 and a credit to accumulated depreciation for the same amount. The last thing I want to mention is that just like in the other methods, depreciation stops when the asset's book value equals its expected salvage value. Annual depreciation expense varies considerably among these three methods, but total depreciation expense is the same for the five-year period. Straight line will result in a constant amount, whereas declining balance will result in a decreasing amount, and lastly, units of activity or units of production will result in a varying amount. This is a great exercise to practice calculating depreciation using the three methods we have discussed. The solutions to this exercise will be provided in another document. Before we move on to another topic, I have a few items I would like to discuss. First, depreciation per the financial statements is usually different from the depreciation recorded on the tax returns. The IRS does not require the taxpayer to use the same depreciation method on the tax return that it uses in preparing financial statements. As a result, many large corporations use straight-line depreciation in their financial statements to maximize net income, and an accelerated method called makers on their tax returns to minimize their income tax. When a change in an estimate is required, the company makes the change in current and future years, but not to prior periods. It simply revises depreciation expense for the current and future years. A permanent decline in the fair value of an asset is referred to as an impairment. If this occurs, 
the company records a write down in the year in which the decline in value occurs. For example, Disney recorded a $200 million write down on its action movie, John Carter. Disney spent more than $300 million producing this film.